but for everyone else, he became a legend on two wheels at the age of just 16. I used to go on telly with you, didn't I, Ed? Mm. Yeah, I did. <laughs> my name is Marjorie Kidd, and this is my son, Eddie Kidd. If you don't know the name, then this is what he used to do for a living. He's off the lunch ramp! Our winner, Eddie Kidd! Here is about 22 cars. New world record. Eddie Kidd, the man who can fly. The Eddie's sky high career was tragically brought down to earth aged 37 when a crash left him with a life changing brain injury and brought his spectacular death defying jumps to an end. 23 years on from Eddie's accident, we're going back to the street where we grew up as a family. This was the house where Eddie was born. It was a wonderful street to grow up in. I've got the photo of him sitting on there. He was 14 months old. He was always out playing, weren't you? Eddie's passion for stunts was ignited right here at the local cinema, aged 12. This is Islington Green, and that's the cinema where Eddie first saw the Evil Knievel film. As soon as I saw the film, that is what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a stuntman. Not long after, Eddie was attempting jumps like his hero, Evil Knievel, with his friends. Eddie came home and all his face was smashed in. He'd tried to jump over the brick wall and he fell off. At the age of 13, Eddie got his first motorbike and he was soon part of a stunt team called the Cyclomaniacs. And he had jumped his first bus at the age of 15. I don't think about it. I mean, if I thought of the fear, I don't think I'd be doing it. Soon Eddie went on tour around the UK and he earned his first record as junior world champion by leaping over eight buses at just 15. And eventually he beat Evil Knievel's world record of 13 buses when he was just 16. Steve Mole is a childhood friend of Eddie's. That was an extraordinary feat. The ramp was sky high with scaffold. I had to lay the bike down. There was no way of stopping in time. Not deterred, through the years, Eddie's daredevil antics gained him worldwide fame, including attempting to jump the Great Wall of China. I thought this is going to be one of the most dangerous jumps I've ever jumped. He couldn't see over the wall where he had to land in a certain spot. If it had been half an inch out, it would have been a thousand foot drop or something, wouldn't it? I'm doing next time, no hands. Eddie completed over 10,000 jumps. But his career was brought to an end with this jump in 1996. We were at home and we got a call that Eddie's had an accident. He got to the hospital, he was in a coma. They said he might never wake up. We was there for four months until he was out of his coma. After the coma, it became clear that Eddie wouldn't ride again. I'm never going to ride a bike again. It was his mistake. He never blamed anybody for it, did you? I don't hold anyone responsible, only myself. But Eddie has never stopped fighting. Despite his disabilities, he's still achieving extraordinary feats, including finishing the London Marathon in 2011. He stopped speaking after the marathon. And that is the one thing I'd like him to get back is his speech. A lot has changed in Eddie's life since he was a little boy growing up here in Highbury. But on the inside, he's still the same person, kind, funny and determined. We've all done a lot of talking for Eddie today, so let's leave the last word to him, shall we? Would you want to do it all again? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I would. Yeah. You would be better. Yeah. You couldn't have been better. Oh, uh... <laughs> you know, I know. <laughs>Such an amazing story, wasn't it? What a British legend. Oh, yeah, wonderful. totally. Wonderful. Just an incredible human yeah, just being. Yeah, 16, beat the evil canoe. Yep. Yeah, oh, and wonderful. you were getting quite emotional yeah, when you were watching that, because, lovely... because you know him well, yeah, don't you? Yeah. How did you become friends then? The well, I used to play in the same football team. Yeah. We were in the same charity football side back in 
there you go, there's the photo. There, there you go. go. I, well, there's, there's Ed, they've right. circled him on the uh, left, there's me over on the right. Also, if you look in the back row, you've got, you've got Daniel Day-Lewis as well. It was one hell of a oh, football gosh. Um, oh, my word. Yeah. No, that was... Uh, that oh, was what was he like on the pitch there, then? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, just no. say it, it, was, it was the 80s. We used to... The game was on a Sunday. We'd been out on the Saturday. Right. We were lucky any of us turned up. I used to go and watch. <laughs> I can remember, yeah. And how about you, Gillian? Yeah, when... when yeah, was that, is that I just you... met him, yeah, when, when he used to play football and all that, because we used to go and watch the boys play, you know, yeah. and, and everything, from EastEnders and everything. And then we just got to know one another, and then you go to a lot of charity events, you know, you go to... And yeah. he was always there, always yeah. supporting. He's, he's still really particular about his, yeah. his dinner jacket and his cummer band oh. and his yeah. bow tie. Oh, he's so yeah. smart, such yeah, a lovely, lovely guy. Yeah, he comes across as such a nice guy, yeah, Wonderful. exactly.